How's everybody doing? This is a DVD update, three pickups today. And first off, I would like to say thank you so much to everybody for the continued support on my new channel. I really do appreciate it. You guys all rock. And before I actually get to the pickups, I found this movie here, Quadrophenia. I had it uh, stored away when I had moved previously. It's still sealed. You can see the plastic on there. And uh, I've never seen it, never watched it. I guess I blind bought it years and years ago. And I checked to see how much it was because I was thinking about selling it because I've never watched it before and it's still sealed. And it turns out this is really out of print. New copies go for 100 starting at 100 and go up to, I've seen ones on there for, on Amazon for like 125 and even higher. And used copies, open ones, were going for like 75 starting at 75 and up. So it's kind of crazy. I put it on eBay and I priced it to sell uh, $60 new and I sold it. So that's pretty cool. I've never seen the movie. Uh, apparently it's really out of print. Um, I'd rather have the $60 than a movie that might not be something that I'm into. Uh, apparently it's got a, a coming of age story with uh, uh, the soundtrack from The Who, from Quadrophenia album. So it's kind of like a, a mod movie. So if anybody's seen this, let me know down below if it's any good and if I made the right decision by selling it. Or should I have kept it? Either way, let me know. Now, on to the pickups. First up is The Tattoos from 2007. It stars Jason Bear from the TV show Roswell and Michael Hurst as well. Basically, it's about a young tattoo artist who uh, sees a couple of Samoan people doing a certain style of tattooing, and he basically steals an item that he used for tattooing, and he unknowingly releases a Samoan spirit. And everybody that he tattoos ends up uh, becoming infected and has the spirit taking over their body and essentially killing them. And he ends up tattooing the love interest, and there's a whole twist about who caused the spirit to go into the, the instrument and how they have to release it. And I thought it was a very interesting concept, but I didn't think it was uh, executed well. I remember I saw the trailers for this and I was really interested in seeing it. And uh, it, like I said again, it was a decent concept, but in my opinion, it wasn't executed that well. Uh, it is something a little bit unique and different, so I would say it's worth a rental at least. I would give it a 6 out of 10. I'm a little, you know, strict and harsh on films. But uh, I thought, again, you know, it's worth a worth checking out. Um, I wouldn't recommend buying it for a blind buy. I, it was a blind buy for me. I got it used for like a couple bucks. But honestly, though, I don't think it really has much rewatchability. Uh, I'm probably not going to watch this movie again. Once was enough for me. It was an interesting concept, but uh, fell flat. But it was interesting to find out more about uh, Samoan traditions and Samoan myths as well. And the one girl here, Carolyn Chiang, holy smokes. Mwah! Muy picante. And next up is Tales from the Hood. Uh, this was a movie that I remember watching as a kid, and I remember really enjoying it, so I had to pick it up. I believe this is out of print, but you can still find it at a decent price. It's a horror anthology, uh, four short stories, in the vein of EC Comics and Tales from the Crypt with an urban twist on it, if you will. It's directed by Rusty Condiff. It stars Clarence Williams III, Joe Torre, the actor, comedian, not the uh, famous baseball player and coach. David Allen Greer and Corbin Burnson as well. And I think my favorite stories were the ones with David Allen Greer with the whole monster and domestic abuse kind of thing going on. All these stories have to do with morality and I really like that aspect as well. Uh, like I said, I really enjoyed the story with David Allen Greer and then Corbin Burnson as well. Corbin Burnson was a uh, politician, he's kind of like racist, redneck kind of guy. And he moves into this old quarters that I guess used to be a slave quarters, I believe. And there's all these little dolls and it's really kind of cool. And you see this big painting, this big mural uh, with this with this lady in it. and. I just thought that one was really cool. Uh, that's probably my favorite with David Allegrier's coming in second. If you've seen this, let me know which was your favorite. Very enjoyable film. I would definitely give it a 8 to a 10. Uh, this is very nostalgic for me. I remember watching this a lot back in the day on like HBO uh, when I was a kid. And I really enjoyed it. Had to pick it up. Uh, if you've seen this, definitely let me know what you think of it. And there's Clarence Williams III right there. The, the funeral home director. Released by HBO Home Video right there. Definitely a great pickup. Uh, I definitely recommend this one. And next up is the unrated director's cut of Midnight Meat Train. This was adapted from a short story by Clive Barker. I thought this was in a tremendous movie. Uh, if you haven't seen it, highly recommend it. Get on it. Definitely worth a blind buy. In my opinion, this is easily on the top 30 of best horror movies of the past decade. It stars Bradley Cooper, Leslie Bibb, Brooke Shields, and of course Vinnie Jones. Vinnie Jones playing Mahogany. Awesome. Vinnie Jones did just a fantastic job playing the serial killer Mahogany. Just no nonsense. Bad to the bone. Just a just really, Vinnie Jones is, just plays the badass so well. There's the back right there too. The only, only issue, the slight issue that I have with this film was the CGI blood in some scenes. There's only like a couple scenes that had it. That was the only thing I didn't like about it. 
Basically the story is about Bradley Cooper who plays a photographer and uh, he's trying to find more work and Brooke Shields character basically tells him that you have to get more gritty, you have to find really what the city's about. And by chance Bradley Cooper's character takes a picture uh, late one night on the subway and uh, the pictures of a girl who ends up getting killed and he sees the hand of the killer and he goes back there to the subway at the same time and he kind of becomes obsessed with the killer and finding out who he is and taking pictures of him and following to his hotel and things like that. And I just thought this movie was fantastic. One of the best adaptations from a Clive Barker story ever. This Hellraiser and Nightbreed. Candyman. And I really love Rahid Rex as well. I hope they re-release Rahid Rex. That's crazy out of print. I love the visual style to this. The gore. It's very, it has a very voyeuristic feel. Vinnie Jones' character Mahogany, he plays a, uh, a butcher. He butchers meat by day. And then at night he butchers people. I want to get on here real quick and say that... Uh, Vinnie Jones' character Mahogany, he has no dialogue in the movie whatsoever, and uh, I really like how they explain that, and I think that's really cool how they explain it. A great horror movie in my opinion, and I love the ending, there's a little bit of a twist, and I just, it's awesome. Again, Vinnie Jones' is Mahogany, fantastic. Just the whole movie, just a really dark tone to it. Oh, I want to say so much more about this movie, but I don't want to give anything away, especially towards the end is some of my favorite parts where you get to get a little, see a little bit something that you weren't expecting, perhaps. I know I wasn't expecting when I saw it, I was like, what? totally kind of came from left field and I wasn't expecting it at all and uh, it's a very neat interesting idea and concept probably one of my favorite uh, Clive Barker adapted uh, films right here and some really cool bonus features as well I ended up watching Clive Barker the man behind the myth which is a really cool documentary kind of shows uh, Clive Barker talks about him and I actually personally didn't know that he's uh, he's openly homosexual and he talks about that and I wasn't aware of that and they, he shows some of his artwork as well he's a tremendous artist and that was really cool to see his artwork but if you've seen this movie, definitely let me know what you think of it. In my opinion, one of the best of the past decade, at least in the top 30, if not higher. Um, I give it a 9.5 out of 10. The only thing giving it, holding it back would be that CGI blood. Everything else was just really well done and uh, is really gripping and thrilling. And if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. Definitely worth a blind buy. You can find it used pretty cheap on Amazon or eBay or wherever, basically. Definitely worth checking out. Highly recommend it. Right there. Midnight Meat Train. Amazing. And this is the unrated director's cut right here. Very dark and creepy and just an awesome vibe to the movie. A very bleak feel throughout the whole movie. I love this movie. Can't get enough of it. I can't even tell you. I watched it for the very first time on the Sci-Fi channel and then I just had to buy it. And I've seen it several times since and I love it. And Lionsgate really dropped the ball uh, with the theater release on this. They should have given this a very wide theater release. This is a great horror movie. Very stylistic. And uh, it should have gotten a better theater release. And the Rampage Jackson scene was really cool as well. If you've made it this far in the video, you have a chance to win Midnight Meat Train right here on DVD, the unrated director's cut. So congratulations to you. All you have to do is write ketchup or mustard down below in the comments section. That's all you have to do. Ketchup or mustard. And you get a chance to win this. I'll announce it in my next video after this, who won. So good luck to everybody and thank you again for watching my videos. I figured this would just be like a neat little giveaway to people that actually watch my videos and make it through to the end. So those are my pickups right here. Midnight Meat Train, I would get a 9 to a 9.5 out of 10. I loved it that much and I highly recommend it. Next up, Tales from the Hood right here, I'd give it about an 8 out of 10. Very good anthology of uh, four horror shorts, kind of the EC comics. Uh, Tales from the Crypt with an, uh, with an urban feel to it. And next up, The Tattooist right here. Uh, interesting concept. Again, kind of fell a little short for me personally, but it was unique and uh, interesting to learn about uh, Samoan culture, traditions, and myths. And then Quadrophenia, I haven't watched it, but I, I just sold it. Uh, I've had it in storage for... Uh, let me know if I made the right decision on uh, selling it for $60. I uh, probably could have gotten more for it, considering that most ones were going for 100 and up for new and sealed ones, and used ones were going for starting at 70 So, you know, but I priced it to sell. I don't want to, you know, sit and wait. A lot of those people will probably never sell their, their items pricing it that high. I know it's all about supply and demand, and this is long out of print, but I just couldn't imagine, you know, paying that much money for a DVD. I think one of the most expensive DVDs I've ever purchased was the Wonder Years uh, Holiday Episodes. Uh, DVD. I think they only had two legitimate Wonder Years releases and that was one of them and that was very expensive. But uh, right now I just, I don't know, I'd rather have the $60. If you guys have seen any of these movies, let me know what you think of them and leave me a comment down below. I hope everybody's doing well. Take care.